In this video, we'll focus on another type of elasticity, that is, income elasticity of demand. In my previous videos, we've already gone through elasticity of demand and cross-price elasticity of demand. If you want to understand the concept of elasticity, I suggest you go through them as well to get a better understanding. In this video, we'll just focus on income elasticity of demand, which measures the change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in income. In simple terms, this equation is trying to find out what happens when your income increases or decreases and its effect that it has on consumption or quantity demanded. Going back to the topic of price elasticity of demand, we know that we had a formula that looked like this, where we had percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. Just want to quickly show you the similarities of the elasticity formula. So here we have the only difference between the two is what the denominator represents. So for example, in your income elasticity of demand, we have income. And for your price elasticity of demand, we have price. So here again, we're just trying to find out what happens to quantity demanded if there was, for example, a change in the price. And now in this case, what happens when there's a change in income? So very similar concept of um, elasticity where we measure the change in quantity demanded or consumption over either the price or the income. In this case, we're obviously looking at the change in income. So how we try to understand income elasticity of demand is simple. Here we assume, let's say for example, our income increases, then we should expect that our quantity demanded or consumption levels would increase. But as our income decreases, for example, if we lose our jobs or we lose our income, then quantity demanded or consumption also decreases. But it's not so simple as just that. Here we have a case of a normal good. So these are goods where we would consume uh, more of it if our income increases. But we also have a case when our income increases and our consumption or quantity demanded decreases. And also when our income decreases, our quantity demanded for that particular product increases. This is a violation to the rule where now we have a situation where we're dealing with an inferior good. These two cases will be discussed more in detail as we move along with the lesson. And you'll be able to make a distinction between what a normal good is versus what an inferior good is. A normal good is very easy to understand. So let's say, for example, we have income increases, quantity demanded should also increase. But when income decreases, quantity demanded should decrease. On the other side, inferior good, when the income increases, quantity demanded decreases. And when income decreases, quantity demanded or consumption for that product increases. Here we separate normal goods into two different types of groups. So we have a necessity product and we have a luxury product. A necessity product represents something like food or transport or petrol. For example, if your income increases, you'll normally consume more of that product. But the elasticity of this product lies between zero and one where we have a positive elasticity and it would be something like, let's say for example, food, because you can only consume a certain amount of food and if your income increases, we would normally consume more of that good. A luxury product represents something like a car or something like a holiday, where if your income increases, you definitely will consume more as well. Here we have a positive elasticity also, but it will have a, elasticity that's greater than one, showing that it is a luxury product. I'll discuss these, the ways that we calculate these elasticities as we go on in the lesson. For now, I'm just giving you a brief overview of the difference between an inferior good and a normal good. So with the inferior good case, we have a situation where I like to call it the two minute noodle case, where if our income increases, we'd stop buying this type of product because we can afford better food. Example, going to a restaurant or at the shops, we buy better quality noodles. 
Um, and if our income were to decrease, then we would consume more of it because it's a cheaper product. So put yourself in a position where you're going to a supermarket and because you're a student, you only have a thousand rand for the month, you have to consume food, but you, the type of product that you consume is based on your income. So for example, if your income is low, that means you need to consume products that are pretty cheap. And when then, when you qualify and you start working and you get a job, then basically you would consume better products. So therefore you would stop buying the two minute noodles and you'd buy another type of product. So inferior goods always have a negative elasticity, which is obviously less anything less than zero. Okay, so let's analyze the first type of product that we have. We have a normal product, which is now classified as a necessity product. Anything like normal food, um, maybe toilet roll, petrol, all of those types of product when your income increases, you would consume more of it, but well, let's see what happens. So for example, we've got our equation here where let's assume that our income increases by 20%. 20% increase in income will lead to an increase in quantity, cons quantity demanded or consumption. But let's say, for example, it only increases by 10%. Because what happens here is that you're not going to take all that income and just buy necessity products because you only need a certain amount of necessity products and you're not going to spend all your income on necessity products. So therefore, how we can understand this is that when your income increases, your quantity increases as well, but does not increase by the same amount as the increase in the income. So here we have a situation where if we put this on the calculator, we get a positive elasticity of 0 0.5. Therefore, we can see that when the necessity product is involved, we have an elasticity between zero and one, which is shown here as well as 0 0.5 in this example. In our second case, we have a normal good case as well, which now deals with luxury products. Here we have a situation where we say our income elasticity demand is equal to the equation on the top there. So here we can say, let's say for example, our income increases by 20% as well. And what will happen to our consumption levels? So in this case here, you know, for a luxury product, we're looking at something like a new car or a new house, or maybe even clothes. So for example, we can take out a credit card for this, or we can take out more credit because our income increases. And that will basically increase our consumption levels to greater than 20%. Therefore, we can say that when our income level increases by 20%, we'll experience an increase in consumption of 40%. So therefore, we're left with an elasticity which is positive and a positive 2, which we said here, anything that's greater than 1 represents a situation of a luxury product. And in the last case, dealing with an inferior good, which we know now is to be two minute noodles. For example, you can use any example you, you can think of personally that when your income increases, you consume less of it. But in this example, we use two minute noodles. And here we have income elasticity of demand is equal to, let's say for example, our income increases to 20% as well. And now because you've got a new job or you got a raise at work, what happens to our quantity consumption of an inferior good would decrease. So let's say, for example, we have a negative 10% decrease. So a decrease in quantity demanded. And this will pop out a elasticity, which is negative 0.5. So here we have a negative elasticity, which is less than zero, as we described in the introduction to the normal versus inferior good case. So here we can see that when our income increases by 20%, then our consumption level for that particular product will decrease by 10%. So we can summarize normal and inferior good case on a number line where we have our elasticity that is, shows a zero there. And for example there, anything that's 
negative elasticity would show an inferior good case. And anything positive, so on the positive side, will show a normal good case. So what we can show is we can say that's our normal good case. And our normal good case gets split between two products. One is our necessity product. And the other one becomes our luxury product. We, we can see here from the table on the left hand side, the necessity product would have an elasticity between zero and one. This shown there. And then anything greater than one would represent that of a luxury product. So anything greater than one to the right hand side would represent a luxury product.